Hey everyone, Luke Durden here. And today I'm gonna to take you through the creative process behind this painting here using a real bull skull as reference material. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. So after some close examination from me and my dog, Obi, we've decided to do a front view of the skull. So now that the still life's set up, I've decided to go with a 16 by 20 canvas in portrait orientation. I now stain the canvas with a burnt umber acrylic paint, giving a warm underpainting as well as hiding any white canvas. Now to mount my canvas on the easel. Still life is set up, canvas is mounted, and now it's time for our chalk sketch. So I'm going to start here by mapping in where I want this skull to fit on my canvas. Focusing on the big shapes and where they sit relative to other shapes on the skull. I use the divider to let me know where an object starts or finishes relative to my canvas. Even though this tool helps tremendously, I still have to remember to draw what I see, not draw what I think is there. For my palette, I'll be using titanium white, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium red light, alizarin crimson, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, ivory black, and I have some used paint from a previous palette. Unfortunately, I lost the footage of me mixing my colors, so let's just enjoy some shots of the finished palette. start from the background, work my way to the foreground, then painting the skull and finishing up with the horns. For these large areas like the drapes in the background, I'll be using a size 10 flat brush. As I start working on the creases of this foreground fabric, I switch to a smaller angled brush to really make those crisp fold lines in the fabric.
Because the length of the skull is actually quite large, when you paint the skull head on, you're going to have to foreshorten it, meaning that some areas are going to have to be painted bigger than they actually are. In this case, the upper jaw in comparison to the top of the forehead. I'm going to have to make that upper jaw larger than it actually is because I'm going to try and make it look like it's coming out towards you from a two-dimensional surface. You'll see I'll go back to that smaller angle brush again and I've really wanted to work on my confident brush strokes and not trying to blend all the colors in on the canvas. Instead load that brush up with a color I feel is right for that area and making a very confident brush stroke and just allowing that to exist there untouched. Okay, so the painting's done. I'm gonna allow it to dry for about a week or so and finish up with the hardware and give it a final varnish to seal it all. Through the beautiful power of editing, she's dried and ready for some hardware. Next up, let's clean up those edges. using a 3 quarter inch flat brush and Mars Black acrylic paint. After about an hour, the edges dry and we're ready to do the varnish. I'm going to be using some Gamblin gloss varnish and a disposable foam brush. So this bowl skull is finally done. Varnished is dried and ready to be hung. All in all, I'm quite happy with finished product. There's definitely a lot to learn from here, and I can't wait to apply those lessons to my next paintings. I'll definitely be doing another painting with this cow skull, but I think it'll be a lot more dramatic from a side profile. But for now, we can call this one complete and move on to our next project. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to leave a like and a comment down below. You can subscribe here, or if you'd like, Here's another video from my channel.